All right, guys, we got the new board in, and this is the one that was in it. I've already popped the new one in and got it wired, and guess what? Same exact issue. So, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the next thing that we did was uh, started disconnecting everything and uh, trying to oscillate it down to what was happening. And this wire right here, if that wire is connected, the board won't fire up if that wire is disconnected with everything else connected the board powers up like you would expect so that wire and talking to the engineers uh leads over here to this cluster of wires that i've shown on a previous video and by the way if you're just now watching this channel or these this facebook group uh this machine costs fifty thousand dollars fifty to sixty range and it cuts up to uh 10 millimeter or three eighths thick carbon steel every video ever the first thing how much is it and what does it cut so there's that um so this was the these connectors here that i showed in a previous video that i wasn't uh you know this was not the best setup i don't really know what would be better but this is definitely not good so there was a couple of clusters of wires coming into these two connectors and i thought maybe they were uh you know touching each other so i ran the clusters into a single wire and ran them into this and that didn't make any difference and so i've got it oscillated down to this wire right here so this wire is connected in uh, the board won't power up and if it is not connected it will and this wire is a part of this bundle which goes over that way so i was just kind of looking around i removed the dust cover because I'd remembered when I put all this together, seeing these limit switch wires coming in, you know, feeding into here. So I'm gonna stick my camera down inside here. But if you if you look right there, yeah, I do not know if that is the issue. Uh, it very well could be. Whether it is this issue or not, that needs to be fixed. And basically, what it is is the limit switch wire. And if you look under here, and again, I don't, there's a bunch of covers I still don't have on this machine yet. But if you look hanging down right there, going up in between this cable trough and the casting of the, of the gantry, it's wedged in there. So I'm going to pop these covers off and pop this loose and get that corrected and probably splice that out and reconnect it together where it got pinched. And maybe if that's the issue... And it's taken a, you know, a hot wire to ground, basically, and pulling that whole board down. So let me get this apart and take a look at that closer and see what we got going. All right, so we got that loose there. And uh, you can see the wire looping over right there. And as I've shown many times, uh, a lot of parts of this casting are very rough. A lot of the openings still have casting flash, just rough. So... Um, I mean, you know, I, I guess it's one of those things where I'd like to see them do a little bit more machining on this or maybe some hand finishing in certain areas. But then again, the more finishing work you do in areas that aren't really seen or needed, um, you know, it's just more money. So uh, I'm going to cut that wire. It looks like it's just looped through there and it really shouldn't be. So I'm just going to cut it and re-splice it and we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. I got it cut, and uh, luckily there's enough lead on both ends to get it, uh, do a little bit of work on it here and spice it back together without having to do it inside there. But right, you can see that that's really flattened out, and I don't know if this is the source of the problem or not, but I kind of am thinking that it is. And with the machine running a little bit, you know, this thing creates a lot of G-forces and vibrations and stuff, so probably running it for just a little bit that I did, it, cause the rest of the damage so let me get it spliced back together and let's see if we can power it up and make it cut all right got those <clears throat> spliced back together there just use some regular standard butt connectors i'll throw some electrical tape around that and it should be as good as any other connection on this machine so let's go fire it up see what we got all right this board here is the one that we're watching so i'm gonna hold the camera and flip this on here see what we get Oh yeah, 
We got lights on it now. All right, let me get a get some of this wiring buttoned up, the covers back on it, and we'll see if she cuts again. All right. <clears throat> One of the good things is I was making this branding iron. And I saw Chuck Morrell put a post on uh, one of the groups saying he had done a branding iron, had to make it twice, so um, because he didn't mirror it. And I was about to cut this. That was what was actually cutting when this thing died. So um, pretty nice feature right in the software here that you can mirror it. So we're just going to mirror it and cut it. I'm going to show this real quick too. Uh, you notice the color of that's about the same as the glass on the enclosed units that you see. I uh, got these on Amazon. I think they were like $37 on Amazon Prime. I'll put a link in the description for anybody that wants it because if I don't put it on there, somebody's going to ask. I don't care if you get these or not. I don't know if these are any good or not. I don't know if these will protect you or not. These are just the ones I bought. So let me get them on and we'll see if it cuts now. All right, that's a 10 gauge. This is my first time cutting any 10 gauge carbon steel. And it has a little bit of dross on the back of it. Didn't, wasn't crazy about how it cut. That was 100 inches a minute. So we got it on 140 inches a minute. Now we're gonna cut it again. Still looks like it's too slow. All right, I, I tweaked that a little bit and uh, didn't really get much improvement on it. That's kind of how it's looking on the back. Um, so I need to tweak the settings. I've got a 2.0 in there right now. I probably need a 1.5. And um, but anyway, we're back up and running now. And um, moral of the story is, you got a board like this that's got a bunch of stuff connected to it and you verify that you have your input source is good, the next thing to do would be disconnect everything from it except for the input source and see if it powers up. I mean, I started my career out in information technology and troubleshooting PCs and printers for HP, Compaq, IBM, all the brand names. And man, that was the first thing you ever did. You popped it open and if it was not powering up uh, and you verified you had power coming out of the power supply, you popped all the boards out of it and to see you know process of elimination from there but shout out to the uh prima engineers in china for uh, helping me troubleshoot it and uh, for sending the board out even though that didn't end up being the problem we're back up and running now thanks guys